Well, the first thing we're going to do for this small startup company, once they get in there and they're using this wireless network, they've got a broadband connection to the internet, we're going to help them immediately back up their systems, okay? They've moved in, they've got laptops and workstations, they're a bunch of developers and programmers, and they're getting to work. Let's say they're writing an application. Well, we're going to help them immediately back up their systems, on-site backups, cloud-based backups, back up and restore. And we're going to do this before we even drink the firewall Kool-Aid or introduce any other security solutions, right? We want to make sure that they have their data protected. So along with that, we want to have the ability to get alerts if a backup doesn't happen properly. We want to get reporting done from these backup solutions. So regardless of whether we do local backups or a combination of cloud-based backups, maybe with software as a solution, something like Box or Dropbox or one of the others, we want to make sure we understand the eight key attributes we want to apply to this solution, to this business need. And here they are, performance, latency, scalability, capability, usability, maintainability, availability, and recoverability. So we want to think about the, re the performance, latency and performance of our backup system, especially if we're backing up over our broadband connection to the cloud. Is this a scalable backup solution? Uh, locally, are we going to use some RAID solution? Or are we just going to use the cloud? What are the capabilities? Do we have individuals on site that have the expertise and the knowledge to do backups and restores? Are we going to have a dual operator where one person can back up but not restore and another can only do restores and no backups? What's the usability of our product? What's our vendor relationship? What's our knowledge of the product? Is it maintainable? Is it highly available? Again, we could use RAID. We could use the cloud. We could use both. Do we have a recovery process? Do we test our recovery process? It's not good enough just to do backups. We have to do restores and recovery as well. And then once we have our solution presented to this customer, we want to make sure that BD Security Consultants is ensuring that they're going to get a return on their investment and that they're going to have understanding of their total cost of ownership and that the controls to protect their database and their data is not going to cost more than the actual value of the data itself. So there's one example, okay, a simple example, database systems. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about with our new startup company is access controls, okay? Again, not drinking the firewall Kool-Aid yet, not putting in any kind of VPN. We just want to get the data backed up and protected and secure and make sure we have access controls. Access controls for end users, and then, of course, access controls for administrators. So are we going to be using a Windows Active Directory environment or a Novell eDirectory environment or some other Linux solution that's using LDAP or Open LDAP? So we want to have something that's going to be a centralized user and group database. And then we'll integrate that into an identity and access management system, possibly integrating Active Directory with a adaptive security appliance firewall, maybe 802.1x, maybe Radius servers, maybe using Active Directory, and then possibly having centralized management through Cisco's identity service engine. Because we're gonna have end users, of course, they're gonna be bringing in mobile phones, pads. So we need identity services, not just for the laptops and the workstations, but these mobile devices they're bringing in. So a BYOD initiative. So we want to have identity access management systems, authentication systems. Kerberos is a really good option there with Active Directory. And then a configuration enforcement system. So something that's in their budget that is some change and configuration management software. And again, all of this has to have the ability to get alerts and alarms and develop reports. And don't forget, we're going to analyze these solutions against our eight key metrics. Does it meet our needs for performance, latency, scalability, capability, usability, maintainability, availability, and recoverability? And what's the return on investment for this company? Is the total cost of ownership in their budget? So for this particular solution, we're going to use Windows Active Directory and Server 2012 and Exchange 2016 and go for unified communication from a Microsoft standpoint. Now, what about malware protection? What about the firewall for detecting network malware and endpoint protection? Well, for this customer, we have to determine kind of what are some of their needs for their firewall. And we're going to suggest to them a next generation firewall 
like the newer adaptive security appliance 5500X from Cisco, or maybe a Palo Alto next generation firewall running 8.0 or higher with the Pan OS. So let's see what some of their needs are. They need a firewall that supports 250 megabits per second throughput while doing application inspection. Okay, so advanced visibility and control of applications and content security. They also need 100 megabits per second at the most for threat prevention throughput, 50 megabits per second for their IPsec VPN, that's way more. They're looking for growth, they're planning for growth. They're thinking about this small business is gonna be growing and they're gonna have their own remote sites or the most, their own satellite sites. So this new startup business will eventually, within the next six to nine, 12 months, become the headquarters as they expand out. So they need something that's highly available that supports virtual routing and also security zones. So based on this and based on their budget, and of course those eight metrics that we know about, we're gonna to decide to go with a, a Palo Alto Networks next generation firewall. Well, I just happen to have a PA500 here running PanOS 8.0. So let's go take a look at this solution, which we're gonna suggest for this customer of BD Security Consultants, LLC. Okay, so I'm on my Palo Alto PA500. You can see down here, that's the model. Uh, PA500 uh, software version, Pan OS 8.04. There's the Global Protect Agent, which is kind of its remote access VPN agent. And this is the choice we're gonna go with for our small to medium sized business customer. And eventually this customer is gonna grow. They're gonna expand out a data center. They're gonna segment their network. They're gonna have some zoning. They'll have some virtualization technology, probably a BYOD mobility initiative. So we want to have something in place, a next generation of firewall that can accommodate all that. They'll probably have an increasing number of applications, a wide array of devices, and we want to be able to apply application security and content security, not based just on port numbers. Also, we want to base some policy and profiles on the user identification. So we're going to integrate our Palo Alto firewall, either with a backend radius server or maybe Active Directory or maybe eDirectory from Novell. We have lots of options. Now, I just pulled this out of the box and got onto this. So I'm not even on a production network at all, which, by the way, you would not configure your firewall in line in a production network. Okay, you're going to do it ahead of time. But some of the features we have here is we have this application center, which is a very useful tool on the Palo Alto firewall, where you can see your you know, visibility into your network, different threats, activity that's been blocked uh, based on a wide variety of metrics, okay? You can also see that we can have sanctioned and unsanctioned devices here as well. The monitoring area, and one thing about the Palo Alto is that I can run this administrative tool locally off of the firewall, or I could use Panorama, which is going to manage one or more firewalls and even log aggregation systems. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to go with Palo Alto over Cisco, because it's a single operating system. Uh, the graphical interface, the visibility tools are integrated and unified with Cisco. I've got different management platforms. I've got a bunch of different operating systems. So uh, whether you're a Cisco person or not, I use both. But you can see here under the monitoring area, all the different types of logs that we can get. Uh, wildfire submissions. One thing I like about wildfire is that it's enabled by default, as well as botnet traffic filtering is enabled by default on the Palo Alto firewall, whereas botnet is a separate license. I have to get on the ASA. There is an advanced wildfire where I can go up and do file disposition and other treatment of indicators of compromise. That's really the only extra license I would have to buy though for this PA500. So for this company, there's not a lot of extra expense for them. Now, this is all really the monitoring area, of course, is where we can monitor uh, our logs, the scope of our applications. We can do various reports. Really the power here though is in policies. But before we do policies, let's look at the objects because the policies are invoking different objects. So the main objects are the security profiles. So uh, on the PA500, we can do antivirus, anti-spyware, vulnerability protection, which is really intrusion prevention services. If you want to break it down, IDS and IPS, URL filtering, 
or web proxy, file blocking, uh, wildfire analysis, which I mentioned, also data filtering and denial of service protection. And this is the DOS protection is actually separate from vulnerability protection, so we can get pretty granular there. So once you create these profiles, these profiles can be used in various policies. And if I go to the policies area, I can see that we have, you know, network address translation, quality of service, PBF, policy-based forwarding. We can be a decryption proxy. We can inspect tunnels, uh, application override. So for example, if I want to create a policy for this small to medium-sized business, and it's not based on port numbers, or it's not recognized, I can create an override for that custom application. Maybe it's a custom database front end, for example. So uh, policies and profiles are kind of the key aspects here uh, on the Palo Alto firewall. And this is the solution, again, as we kind of step back we analyze our security solutions, making sure that they meet our business needs. You know, we also want to consider those eight key metrics when we're looking either at our Palo Alto firewall or our Cisco adaptive security appliance. Maybe we're looking at some other solution like Checkpoint or one of the other competitors. And again, it comes down to performance, uh, any latency issues that are introduced here. Does it affect our voice over IP traffic, for example? Is it scalable? And again, this can be installed in a virtual appliance as well, a VMware ESX environment. What are the capabilities? We kind of talked about some of those. Uh, the usability, I think usability wise, especially from a management standpoint, it's superior to Cisco at this point. Then of course, there's maintainability, availability, which of course we could deploy this firewall into a high availability environment by by basically going to these interfaces down here and making these interfaces of type high availability. And so you can see some of the other differences between an ASA is we can actually make an interface a tap interface, okay, like a network tap. A virtual wire is similar to a transparent firewall, a bump in the wire, okay? Interfaces can be either layer two or layer three or an aggregate, which is going to use LACP. That's the equivalent of Cisco's ether channel. So lots of flexibility as well. And if we wanted to have an active standby or an active active failover environment, we would make our interfaces uh, high availability HA interfaces, either two or three interfaces, depending upon our deployment. And again, recoverability, you know, how stable is the operating system? One thing about the Palo Alto, as opposed to a Cisco ASA, is the control plane and the management plane and the data plane are completely, totally separate, just like a Juniper security appliance would be. Uh, with the ASA and the Cisco router, the iOS, there's still some kind of bleed over between those planes, which can be less stable. So these are things we want to think about, you know, as we go into a real world environment, I'm not trying to sell you on anything. I'm just going through a hypothetical situation. You and I, you're the CISO, uh, I'm your security consultant, and we're just going through the process of analyzing uh, how we're going to integrate our solutions, looking at different metrics and attributes to make sure they meet our business needs. And of course, the eight key indicators and metrics, performance, latency, scalability, capability, usability, maintainability, availability, and recoverability. Let's go on to Web Safari now and look at some other solutions. Okay, for this Web Safari, I want to give you a little homework assignment. I'm going to look at five new next generation security solutions from Cisco and their nearest competitor, Palo Alto Networks. And what I want you to do is take some time to come up to these five sites on your own and evaluate for your own imaginary company, your own imaginary deployment, performance, latency, scalability, capability, usability, maintainability, availability and recoverability. Don't worry about the cost, okay? Just those eight attributes and make up a short report, maybe a spreadsheet and compare different solutions because we're comparing two different solutions here. So the first one we're looking at is Cisco's advanced malware protection for networks. A few years ago, Cisco bought out Firesight, which was basically uh, the guy who created Snort, which was the original Unix-based intrusion detection system, it's basically the next generation snort on steroids. They actually hired him as a vice president. So this is their next generation IPS system. You can go in here and watch a video, but you can see some of the features here, continuous analysis with the cloud, retrospective security, reducing event notifications, 
reducing the noise, integrated malware analysis. So that's a solution that we might wanna provide for this client of BD Security Consultants, this new startup. They may wanna look at the adaptive security appliance, the 5500X series, and think about maybe the hardware or virtual Cisco AMP firepower technology. Cisco also has advanced malware protection for endpoints, preventing zero day attacks, continuous monitoring of file behavior, looking for indicators of compromise. You install the Cisco Security Connector on all of your laptops and your mobile devices, and they have connectors for a wide variety of platforms to prevent, detect, and respond, deep visibility, context to control, threat intelligence, sandboxing using the Cisco Talos group. Uh, they can do real-time malware blocking, continuous monitoring and recording, and coverage for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux. So again, you would deploy a quote, lightweight connector on these devices. So that's a solution that we might wanna recommend to, as a BYOD, bring your own device solution to our new startup company. But what about those users who are out there remotely, running around with their laptops and their phones and all those good things? Cisco has a great product called Cisco Umbrella, and it's part of the Open DNS, okay, it's a cloud security platform. What's cool about this is that the end users actually leverage the Cisco DNS servers. So you're actually redirecting your phone or your pad or your mobile device to their DNS servers on the cloud, and they're providing endpoint security across the internet. And you can come down here and see some of the services, DNS and IP layer enforcement, intelligent proxy, and command and control callback blocking. So that's a possible option that we could present to our users. Now, I don't have the website for it, but Palo Alto Networks also has their global connect solution, which is similar. It doesn't operate the same way, but it does provide the same type of security. Now, I've already shown you a next generation firewall from Palo Alto and kind of given you an overview, kind of a flyby of all the capabilities with policies and profiles but this is what we call Palo Alto Traps. And there's a white paper you can download here. And this again, similar to the Cisco Advanced Malware Protection for Endpoints, you're gonna install an agent, okay? This traps agent on the endpoints to give you advanced endpoint protection, okay? And again, they use a lightweight agent as well to automate prevention and protect and enable users. So that's the Palo Alto solution for endpoint protection, it's called Traps. Finally, since our new startup is gonna be using software as a service, okay, they're gonna be using Microsoft 365 very likely, they might be using Workday or Salesforce, they're gonna be focusing a lot on software as a service solutions. So we're gonna to recommend to them as their CASB, as their cloud security broker, the next generation CASB from Palo Alto, and that's called Aperture. And you can come in here and you can see that Aperture is a cloud access security broker, but it goes beyond some of the ones that we've been dealing with for the last few years, uh, leveraging the next generation security features of Palo Alto Networks. So this uh, Lightboard video, you can see some other capabilities here, connecting to sanctioned SaaS applications for data classification and monitoring, data loss prevention, user activity tracking, and protection against known and unknown malware. Okay, that's my demonstration into diving into some real world scenarios and looking at different solutions and attributes, making sure that they meet our business needs. And please don't forget on the exam, those eight key metrics, those eight key attributes that I've mentioned several times, I'm not gonna do it again, but don't forget those eight key attributes for your CASP exam. I really hope you enjoyed this demo.